The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Well, good afternoon. Those of you that managed to, uh, to find your way through a quick lunch, brought yourself to our session for today, Site Casting New Form, Inspiring Function to Respond, which is a creative way of saying, hey, you really should look at something new in, uh, in an exciting way. I'm Jim Beatty. I'm the Technical Director for the Tilt Up Concrete Association. And uh, it's my opportunity to, to moderate this session. I'm going to bring forward our first speaker. Uh, he's the executive director for the Tilt Up Concrete Association and the Concrete Foundations Association, my partner, Ed Sauter. Thank you for the warm introduction, Jim. Uh, first of all, uh, as he indicated, I'm, I'm an architect, so I can make fun of architects. That's one of the nicest parts of being an architect. Uh, but our, my portion is on the use of tilt up construction in monumental structures. And I'm going to finish my presentation with one that was an absolutely marvelous structure that was constructed uh, in conjunction with our convention in Kansas City a couple of years ago and we're hopefully uh, next year when we go to Houston for our convention we can cover something similar to that. <coughs> so anyway I'm going to get started a little bit about the association. Uh, we're a trade association representing the tilt up industry. Oh, there it is. We're a tilt up association, we're a trade association representing the tilt up industry. We have engineers, architects, contractors, uh, as well as suppliers, and we do what every other trade association does. We represent their interests in, in the code industry as well as marketing. Uh, we're a clearinghouse of information. We provide opportunities for recognition of excellence. And most of the presentations and buildings you're going to see throughout this afternoon are going to be slides that were submitted to us or buildings that were submitted to us for, building, for an awards presentation. Uh, and of course, we are kind of the technical clearinghouse for information for the association. That's one of the things we pride ourselves in. We're kind of a niche organization, but by the same token, it's, it's a pretty good market. Uh, at least three years ago, uh, we, could have, we could say that there's probably about uh, between a third and a quarter of a billion square foot of tilt-up panels erected, enclosing about three quarters of a billion square feet of structure. So it's it's not an insignificant amount of work that's being done. Uh, it typically runs from the far west coast of Canada uh, down across uh, the United States, across the south and back up, with pockets also existing elsewhere in the United States. Concrete as a building material has a rich and illustrious history uh, in the use of design, the use of construction of monuments. I typically use this in most of my presentations as still on my bucket list. Whenever I go to Italy, and I've been there like six times, I just can't seem to make it south of Tuscany. Uh, so one of these days I'll get down to Rome and actually see this. But, but this is the Pantheon, uh, the largest free-spanning dome in the world until the Houston Astrodome was built, entirely out of concrete. And this is uh, an example of the endurance of concrete as a material as it's used to build monumental structures. Modern architects have also adopted tilt up as a, or excuse me, concrete as a building material for their monuments or structures that ultimately become monuments, uh, ranging from Frank Lloyd Wright in his Falling Water House, uh, the Guggenheim Museum, and on the right, uh, Corbusier in his cathedral in, in France. So modern architects have also adopted concrete in the use of monumental structures. And now we'll bring in tilt construction into the issue. And of course, the English. Uh, you know, the medieval English people, yeah, actually, no, this is prehistoric English people, 
used tilt construction to build some of their edifices. And we don't know how it did. I've seen several things on the educational channel in terms of how they might have tilted these monolithic stones up. Uh, but it does look like they were tilted. And uh, do we have any Italians in the audience? Sorry there. Uh, the Italians have experimented in tilt construction also, but they tend to get it, got it wrong, you know, and they're still tilting buildings down. But it's, uh, it's, it's still a, an impressive building. Uh, but tilt up as we know it today, yeah, it really got its start. Uh, although there were some applications of tilt up around the turn of the century in the 19, early 1900s using a, a method called a tilt table, where they actually would cast the panels on a table, hydraulically elevate the table and deposit the building elevation there. Uh, and they did that. There were some places in Iowa and Ohio. But tilt up as we know it really didn't get started until after the World War II. Uh, two technical modifications made it possible, the mobile ready mix truck and the mobile crane. That allowed tilt-up to be really what it is today. Lots of other innovations, but those are the two key ones. And now you see tilt-up being used in virtually every kind of building construction that's out there, and as we will end up with, quote, non-occupied buildings. Uh, everything from offices and schools, uh, retail centers, religious buildings, civic structures, and of course, even monuments uh, are being used with tilt-up construction. One of the reasons I think we see so much tilt up as making such inroads in all these types of buildings is the versatility of tilt up. Now here we bring a molten material to the job site, and I like to say that the only two limitations in terms of what you can do with tilt up is the imagination of the designer and the craftsmanship of the person that's actually putting that together. Those are really the only two limitations. And you'll see everything from curved panels, uh, every form of curved panel construction has been done. Uh, we have the, the, the fact that we're using panels as little building blocks. Uh, this is a house out on Long Island that Stephen Hall, a rel relatively well-renowned architect, has done. And I, I like to say most architects, or excuse me, most architects and engineers try to hide the joints of tilt up. This particular architect used the joints as a design element and, and actually celebrated or highlighted the joints along with a lot of other things. Uh, this is a house. I'm looking at building a tilt up house. It won't look anything like this. Uh, also, versatility in terms of finishes. Uh, most people like to, you know, we clad the tilt up in whatever you want. Uh, in this case, we have a light sandblasted or a couple of different sandblasted finishes. And uh, this mimics the type of stonework that is indigenous into this part of, uh, of the country, which is in Utah. But lots of diff different finishes are available. We're bringing concrete to the site as a molten material. So whatever type of form you want to impart in the face of the concrete, you can do it. Everything from readily available forms to even natural things you might find uh, in your job site that you want to incorporate into the panel. <coughs> a lot of versatility, of course, in terms of how panels are placed. Uh, this is a building out in Arizona uh, that actually has panels that are not even vertical. You know, they carried it to a point of about 15 degrees out of plane, and 5 o'clock came and said, eh, what's good enough? No, actually, that was a, that was a design element. Uh, but again, the use of openings at different places in the panel, very simple to do with tilt-up construction. So you have the versatility of tilt-up, you have a molten material, you have craftsmanship, and just uh, the simplicity of doing openings and, and void areas in, in this type of construction that make it very simple. So let's talk a little bit about tilt-up monuments. And monument has a broader context, as I'm going to start with. Uh, we have buildings that are monumental in size. And this is probably, most people, this is what they think of as tilt-up. There's a one or two or three million square foot warehouse. These are truly monumental in size buildings. Uh, this is in Savannah, Georgia, with a Target Distribution Center. And uh, they had to put an extra long job trailer in there in order to be able to pin up all of the panels so they could make it look like a uh, a one-shot deal. Uh, we also have buildings that are monumental in height. Uh, these jobs here are actually cores for elevator and stair towers. Uh, these panels are in the 85, 86 foot range. We've had single high panels up to 90, 99, 91, uh, close to 100 feet in one panel. We have monuments to children. This is a museum in Florida that, again, utilizes all those things that we talked about that are so easy to do in tilt-up, whether it's curvilinear forms, whether it's punched openings, 
Uh, but this is a child children's museum, and I actually have another one in San Diego, a, a great building where you have the architects and engineers combined for a very playful and fun building for the kids. Uh, we can have monuments to history. Some of the products out there today allow you to embed real brick that are a quarter inch thick into the face of the building, so if you have to have a building that fits into an historical area or you want to design something that's monumental in that regard, it can also be done with tilt-up. Uh, the thing that I'd like to point out on here is that you know these, these are real, these aren't exterior insulation finishing appliques to the building on the, on the corner. Uh, those coins, for example, are actually cast into the concrete and if you look across the top, you have a what we call a dental molding. It looks like missing teeth. Uh, but those are actually cast into the panels, too. So all these things can be done very simply, very economically, with sidecast tilt-up construction. We have monuments to the arts. Now, this is a building down in Jacksonville, Florida, that's built right on the, on the coast. Uh, but it has all types of, uh, of linear uh, forms. And even in the, on the lower left-hand side there, you see, because it is a performing arts panel, uh, the panels are splayed outward, and in order to give it some better acoustical performance, they actually cast inverse baffles into the face of the panel uh, to help uh, distribute the sound. Or, or, uh, and you also see different types of curved linear forms that are used here. And, and really, this is a monument to the arts being done out of tilt-up. Uh, another monument to art, a uh, recent submittal this year, is called SLAM, the St. Louis Art Museum. Uh, again, another product that blo broke ground. The architect had this concept, but he didn't know how to do it. And they even got to the point on this job where they were building tools in order to do what they wanted to do. It's fairly simple panels, but they're all on-site polished concrete with granite materials. Uh, it looks nothing like the building in the back, but that's what the architect wanted. He wanted total and stark contrast to the old historic buildings. So here we have a monument to, to the arts. Uh, monuments to God. This is a church, again, another Stephen Hall designed building. Uh, it's kind of signature of his work. You see the joints don't align vertically. Uh, you see the natural uh, finish of the concrete is what he was looking for here. So we actually have more monuments to, to religion and to God. Uh, another one, this is the one that has some of the tallest panels in the world. You see the, the uh, spire or the cross on the top of the panel. That was actually integrally cast with the balance of the panel. And this one's like 91 foot, 7 foot tall from bottom to top. And actually, I haven't been in the church, but I saw the, the photographs. I love when I travel Europe, I love to visit Gothic cathedrals and things like that. And this is actually a recreation of, I think, the, the impact of a Gothic cathedral using tilt-up construction as a, as a methodology. And of course, if we're building monuments, how about a monument to greed? <laughs> Nothing bad with that. But this is a uh, casino, a casino in South Africa. And really, the, the, it's an amazing project. The, the curvilinear forms, the returns. Uh, this is one of those classic cases where somebody didn't realize you really couldn't do that with tilt-up. And so they did it anyway. And they ended up, every time that happens, it seems like we break new grounds. People discover new techniques, new ideas. Yeah, they may have lost money on that one, but maybe not. Uh, but anyway, they learned enough so that the next time they do something, they, they can take those ideas and move them forward. So lots of different types of monuments. Uh, oops. <coughs> Monumental signs. This has probably been one that's been more around than most of the other types of monuments. But when you go into a big new subdevelopment, you see a big sign announcing the subdevelopment, and this is certainly one of those examples. Now, this is made up of five panels. The three interior ones were U-shaped panels just to keep them lighter, uh, and then the finished panels gave it its final enclosure. So five different panels uh, to give you the, quote, monumental sign. Uh, another monument, this is again in South Africa. Uh, this You don't see this, but this is a the Walter Sisulu Square of Dedication to Apartheid in, in South Africa. This has some panels that were, again, no one knew that you couldn't do that. Uh, you look at that, these are warped panels cast in three dimensions. And, you know, the forming, sure, it was expensive to do, but when you're talking monuments, suddenly cost isn't quite as important as if you're doing a building that has to be amortized over a certain time period. Uh, same project, uh, again, they erected these monuments to, uh, to apartheid where they used some of the, the actually, the uh, irregularities in the surface of the concrete to play light over them at night to give it a lot of different 
types of angles and colors and texture. So again, using tilt up for, for monuments makes it makes perfect sense because of the versatility and the type of flexibility you have. Now here's a monument. Uh, this is the, uh, student who was uh, interested in architecture, excuse me, uh, tilt up in Charlottesville, Virginia, who died. And they actually built a building that incorporated some of the elements of tilt up being incorporated actually into the monument itself. In other words, the braces were left in place to show how some of these things go together. But I'm going to finish my presentation on what I think is one of the most moving monuments that I've ever seen. This is the one we dedicated last year in Kansas City in conjunction with our Convention. Uh, we had a young guy in our office, actually a new guy, to design it, and we pretty much didn't give him any instruction. And when I saw it, I said, "You know, this this can't happen. Uh, you can't do that in tilt up." But he had a, a group of contractors, a con local contractor, who he went down with and said, "Well, why can't you do that? I mean, just do this and do that." And anyway, this is a fantastic project. It's a Korean War Veterans Memorial in Kansas City, Missouri, and it incorporates. Everything we talked about before, just about in terms of texture and finishes and shapes, uh, but adds a few more twists to it. Uh, you'll notice there as you look at the end of that, uh, very few times do we ever see the end of the panel, anything but simply vertical or maybe at a 45 degree angle so they can put miter two corners together. Uh, he actually took the end of the panel from one end to the other and splayed it out so that it, I mean, it's just, well, I can show you some more pictures of it. Uh, there was hardly a straight form in the panel. I mean, everything was splayed off at one angle or another, uh, utilizing the chamfer strips, which we always do in order to make it, you know, so we don't have any real hard corners. Uh, I'll show you this again later. In there was a laid-in uh, elastomeric mold uh, that actually produced almost a holographic experience when you view this from, from walking by it. Uh, it's a so it's, Truly, I've never seen that before. I know the company that did it was experimenting with it, but it, it really worked uh, It worked immensely. Now, this is a very simple project. I mean, I think there's like eight panels in it, uh, plus a couple of uh, uh, panels that lead up to it. Uh, a non-habitable building, but it utilizes sandblasted concrete. It utilizes polished concrete. It utilizes reveals. It utilizes the holographic area. And then, of course, all the shapes are non-standard shapes. There's not a square panel in the entire project. Cost per square foot, high. But again, this is a uh, this is a one, and even though the cost on this is probably high, this uh, the Korean veterans group had been waiting for like 12 years to figure out how to build this, and we came along, and even with the cost that they had to pay, it was half of what they thought it was going to, or what they had been told it would cost to do a memorial using uh, other construction techniques. Uh, but again, it was dedicated. I, I said on the, the stage when we dedicated it, I never stepped there with so much brass in my life. There was like all the military people and things like that. But it was, and I've never seen so many people moved by that. I mean, the Korean veterans, there were people crying, and it was just uh, an experience. And to think that a building, in particular a tilt up building, can evoke that type of a response uh, really has uh, made us proud. Uh, has great lighting. Uh, and then again, this is, you can walk through it, there's, there's voids, there's, uh, in addition to the angular surfaces, there are voids in it, but it's just a great project to demonstrate what can be done with the creativity of an architect and a contractor willing, who has a craftsmanship to do it. And there's a picture of that uh, sort of holographic picture of a soldier, that's, that's nothing but concrete, there's no paint or anything on that. It's just the way the mold was made and how it actually, when you walk by it, you see that and then it's gone. And there were two of them, one on two different sides. But again, that's the project. One, two, three, four, five, there's maybe eight or nine panels in the total. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. And then, again, you can look at, take a look at the ends of the panels and see the, how the ends are treated without, you know, there's not a square end on it. They, they taper from one side to the other. Mitch didn't realize he couldn't do that. Uh, in finishing, just remind you that we have a Tilt Up Awards program. Uh, anybody who has created a building that hasn't ever won an award, uh, it, it's a win-win-win situation. It helps us find out what's going on around the world. It also uh, allows you to get free publicity for your project and helps us show the world what is possible using this medium called Tilt Up Construction. 
Uh, we have three different publications, which might be of interest to you. We didn't bring them here because we're not selling anything here. Uh, but we've got one called The Architecture of Tilt-Up, which is really designed as an architectural publication to let them know what is possible. We have the construction of Tilt-Up, which we use actually as part of our C650 uh, uh, certification presentation. And then we have one that will be coming very soon called The Engineering of Tilt-Up. Uh, this one is really the application of the engineering concepts that are being developed in the 551 committee, which is, has a design guide. But they're only talking about the panels. And Tilt-Up really is a system, it's not just a panel. So we needed a way to bridge that point between Tilt-Up panel design and Tilt-Up building design, and that's what this manual will do, be available this year late. And lastly, next year, our conference is in Houston, Texas. Uh, Houston is a hotbed of Tilt-Up activity right now. We'll be at the Sugarland Marriott from October 1st to 3rd in Houston. Uh, we've got a lot of fun things planned. Typically, uh, we'll have uh, an educational component that will be heavily laid on contracts, but we've got one this year that will be have a lot of information on engineering also, simply because with the new engineering manual, with the new 551 design guide, and with our new wind bracing guidelines coming out, we'll have plenty of contact for engineers. We hope to have a buildings tour. Apparently there's a lot of tilt-up activity out in the Sugarland area, and our, we're still searching for that, quote, project that we could hope to repl replicate what we did in Kansas, Kansas City. So that's, uh, that's monumental tilt-up, so hopefully it expanded some of your horizons to let you know that tilt-up is more than a big box. It has lots of great applications, uh, including monuments, and I know the contractor who built that had never even considered doing that for another project, and now he's added it to his uh, list of what I can do is monuments to uh, uh, using concrete. So, thank you.